I am going to tell you right now, the bad part about these Rolga Rollers is after you try them, you're going to want to buy a whole bunch because they work better. Yeah. <laughs> nope, I'm not, I am not a compensated... Uh, No, that's what we said. It, I'm not compensated by Rolga, unfortunately. I should have been smarter. But the thing to understand, and this is because you know, we were going to kind of come in and just roll and warm up a little bit before we get to some of the other stuff, is that uh, the Rolga guy grabbed me two years ago at the Perform Better Summit and was like, can you give me five minutes? And I was like, oh, God. The last thing I want to do is spend five minutes with a sales guy talking about his product, but trying to be polite. And he gave me one of these to try and I'm literally doing what you guys do and I'm on the floor and I was like, I literally looked at him and I was like, you suck. And he's like, well, why? I'm like, I said, you just cost me like hundreds of dollars. I said, because this is absolutely better. So the, the key here, like there's, they've made a bunch of these different, you know, some with freaking spikes and knobs and all this other stuff. But the key here is that your bones drop in the grooves. So what these things allow you to do is basically avoid the bony prominences. So like, for instance, if I'm going to roll my back, if I'm going to roll my lumbar erectors, I can roll and I don't have, you know, some people like, oh, don't roll over your spine. I can roll my spine all I want here because the part that I would be worried about with a conventional roller is the spinous process. So if I've got someone who's really bony, there's a real good chance that they could be like bump, bump, bumping, you know, their spinous process over the roller and that they're going to be really uncomfortable. With this roller, I'm just going to be like in the meat of my erectors and that's it. So I can work all the way up and through in a much better situation than I would be able to use any other way. The other thing that's cool about these when you get like if you take it, put it like in your cervical region. And then what, ha what happens again, right? My cervical spine falls into the gap. And I'm able to just like, all I got to do now is just gently move my head side to side and try to find that sort of section of the suboccipital muscles that's a little bit tender. And so I'm going to really be able to attack that suboccipital area that I was not able to get, again, in a conventional roller kind of sequence. I'm telling you, I just did. It's my taxes are going to go up. That's the problem. At least, Ollie, it's a private school. You know, I don't have to pay for Holy Cross's rolls. I have to pay for yours. It probably ten cents will come out of my check every week. But what you realize, because the same way, if you think shoulder, like take your arm and let your humerus drop into the groove, and then move. And what you realize with these rolgas is they literally spread the forces into the soft tissues and away from the bone, something that, as much as I love the conventional roller, I like this better. I'm going to get more. What? They, we haven't had any break yet. I, I'm trying to think. Chris, when did he demo these? Two years ago? Yeah. So I've had some for two years. We have not had any. Zero deterioration. None. But, like I said, you just keep seeing how you get a different tissue effect when there's a place for the bone to go, which you didn't have previously. And, you know, if you just keep, like, working your way up, if I sit, sorry, I'm losing my, uh, my microphone, but in the same way, if I sit, I can now drop, you know, the head of my femur into the groove again, and get way better penetration into my glutes than I would get with a you know, conventional roller. Again, you're going to be like bump bumping over the head of your femur and it's a little bit uncomfortable and you've got to try to figure out, okay, I can either get above it or below it, but I can't get right through it. Here, I can literally let that head of the femur sit in the groove of that roller and work our way through. And as I said, I'm not, I'm not a paid uh, Rolga endorser. I just, but when we do these things, I always look at it and think if I can show you something that we're doing differently kind of from a warm-up soft tissue standpoint that's better than what we did in the past, then I want to spend like five minutes being able to do that. Yeah, Mike. We still have regular rollers? We still have, actually, that's a really good question. 
I still have a bunch of regular rollers, but you know what I had to do? I had to put them all away. Because I always said, clients are like dogs that pee on the same hydrant all the time. And so you can't get them to change anything unless you take away what they previously used. So we, at first, we put out these ones. We said, oh, these are way better. And everybody's response was, no, they're not. They hurt much more than the other ones. Where are the other ones? And they would literally scrounge around and find the other ones and then use them. And so when I realized that none of our adult clients were actually using these, I just made them put all the other ones away. We boxed them all up. So I still do have them. And what I've actually done so that it doesn't really go to waste is um, we give them to our athletes. Like, so if I have kids like who need them for, you know, for their bag, for practice or whatever, because I mean, I'm, the regular roller certainly works fine. It just doesn't work as well as this roller works because this thing, it's literally wrapping itself around the bone and pressing differently into tissue. So Ed's one step ahead of us. The other thing that's really nice about this roller is you can get some psoas release that you really, the regular roller, you can't get in your psoas. You can't position it. Try to think. So here, if you find your iliac crest, put that roller so that your iliac crest is dropping into the groove. And then here, you don't really have to do anything except lean. If you just lean on that with your really, yeah, you're like, he was like, ooh, exactly. You should get like a, and this again is something that you can't get when we're talking about kind of the conventional roller. And you don't need to do very much here except lay on it and breathe. And interesting, like if you've done, like I know Jeff, you've done some of the RPR stuff. You know, what I've tried to do is attack a lot of the same RPR kind of points. So the other one you can get that the RPR guys like is sternum and you can get the same sort of effect on your sternum that you would get. And again, it's significantly more comfortable because you end up really getting the sternal fibers of your pecs. So a lot of times for us, we're going to think so as kind of posterior hip, posterior shoulder, suboccipital, sternum. Those are going to be the biggies that we're going to try to hit every time. But depending on how much time you budget these, again, you'll get better if you think about quads. Again, you can lay your quad. And what you'll realize, the central groove is a little shallower, so you want to use kind of the distal grooves. But if I think here, if I just drop that, like... I let my femur drop into that groove. Again, you get quite a bit of penetration into your quadricep. Again, a lot of times here, you don't need to do much. Nice, gentle, a little bit of pressure and a little bit of rolling. It's, it's a, I think in some ways it's a less aggressive practice than the old roller. But at the same time, we're clearly impacting tissue that we were not impacting with the regular roller. Um, <laughs> briefly, because I know we don't have a ton of time, I don't want to spend too much time talking about foam rolling and stretching. But when we talk about from that recipe standpoint, we always roll and we always stretch. People, there's a lot of anti-foam rolling sort of chatter or whatever out there on the internet right now, which I think, you know, I, I don't understand it in the sense that I get that this may not be particularly evidence-based at this point in time. It might be tough to say, hey, I'm going to try to come up with some really undeniable evidence that this works. But I also think that, you know, the flip side is when you look at the response of your athletes, the response generally is that this works. <laughs> It's very rare that you expose people to foam rolling who don't continue to do foam rolling. So much the same way we stretch. There's a lot of anti-stretching people that are out there. I will tell you that I, I am a strong believer from an injury prevention standpoint that stretching matters. I have no problem with stretching prior to workouts. I have no problem stretching prior to strength work. I have no problem stretching prior to power work, provided you provide a better bridge into those activities. Yes, should I go from holding a 30 second static stretch to trying to do a measured vertical jump? 
No, probably shouldn't do that. Or, I mean, I still don't think anything bad will happen. I just don't think your vertical jump will be as good. But I think you can't be as worried. I think there's a lot of people out there, and this is what I, we talked about, the filtering idea, who are saying, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And then I always look at them and I think, but who, do you actually do this with anybody? Like, is there any point in time when you actually are a real practitioner? And this is why, like, you know, like a lot of the, the people that came here that I invited, they're people who've been doing this in team settings for really significant periods of time. And a lot of times we don't see what people say, oh, this is going to happen. And you're like, well, we're not seeing that. Like, that's not happening. And, you know, the stretching thing, it's funny. We used to always argue about stretching in hockey. And whether I said stretch, don't stretch, whatever, every guy was going to go out on the ice and plop himself down on the ice and start stretching his groin. Whether I told him to stretch his groin, or I told him to not stretch his groin, I told him it was good for him, it was bad for him, because they would all look at me and be like, it feels way better when I do that. Okay, it feels way better when I do that. And there's not enough evidence for me that it's negative. And in point of fact, I don't think there's any real evidence that it's negative. It's just this, so for some people, there's not enough evidence that it's positive. So my big thing with stretching, I always say stretching, look at stretching as long-term injury prevention. Don't Stretching is not going to make any difference when you do it. Like whether you stretch, whether you don't stretch, make no difference. If you don't stretch for a really long period of time, it's going to make a difference. You will start to develop some overuse syndromes that will be related to poor joint mechanics and inflexibility, and it'll start to take its toll. Got it? Questions before we move on? I just want to make sure everybody, yes. Uh, how uh, structured is the foam rolling with your coaches? So the coach is like, okay, today we're gonna foam roll your calves. Interesting. So in our adult group setting, I am trying to make it be more structured because what we're finding is that some of the adults just like to come late and not do it. With the kids, it's very structured in terms of we try to lead them through the sequence. Okay, we're going to do hip, we're going to do shoulder. So I, I think it's a little bit dependent on who the audience is at that time. But I, I generally prefer more structure to less because I think most people are not as detail attentive as I would like them to be. But again, when I had professional guys who rolled and who were good at it, I didn't tell them anything to do. I was just like, you know, okay, you got five minutes. And most of the time they'd be really super diligent about what they were going to do. So I think it really, like you have to almost gauge your audience. If you have an audience where you look and think, you know, I always tell them when it, when it becomes foam sitting as opposed to foam rolling, it's time for us to stop or time for me to take back control of the situation. And that's when everybody's kind of chilling like I am sitting on the roller talking to somebody else. That's when you realize, okay, this isn't working. But so varied. Anybody else? All right, let's just so we get these out of the way, stuff these back in the box. And then 